Okay. So, I know yesterday we, I basically gave you the outline of what we're going to be doing, correct? I basically said, like, here's what we're going to be doing the next couple days. Okay. We're going to get, we're going to get into it. We're going to start talking about all this stuff so that you know exactly what your homework's going to look like. So you're not like, oh my gosh, I have no idea. We're in John Kerry. I don't even know what we're doing yet. We're in section 1-1. One, one. We're doing points, lines, and planes. Okay, so the big thing today is we got to get through all the vocab. I'm going to go through this pretty quick, so you just got to keep up with me. The basic vocabulary, I'm going to give you the definitions of it here. I'm going to write on the board. Basically, the vocabulary is what most of our homework is based on. They'll say, hey, look for a line on this picture. Name it. So that comes down to, other than your, you know, your basic vocab terms, it's coming down to, do you know how to write your answers down in proper notation? So, this is a huge key today. What I mean by notation, it's how you answer a question. It's the way that you write your answer down for me is super particular and really picky. If you forget like this little symbol, I count it wrong. I'm very picky on that. That's, this is the part that most people miss the points on the first assignment. And again, I always tell you, you can always redo an assignment. You don't like the score, make fixes, turn it back in, you get full credit if they're correct. So, because you've got to get practice with this. I don't expect you to be perfect. But I expect you to at least pay attention today and go, okay, this is how I'm supposed to answer that question. So we have this. A lot of vocab, though. Once we do this, my goal is to do a bunch of examples of what you're going to be looking at. You know, pictures, diagrams, where you can look at a picture and we'll talk about the different parts of it so you know exactly what the, the book is going to ask you for. Sometimes they just ask you how many items are in this picture. Just count the fingers. Oh, there's five of them. But you have to be careful because... The, the toughest part about these examples is like when they get to three-dimensional. Some people can't conceptualize a three-dimensional picture. They can't see that, you know, if there's a three-dimensional object in front of them, there is a back to it. So you have to see it, even though it's not in front of you. So, and I'll try to explain. I'll try to show you a couple of pictures today. So that's kind of the idea. And yes, you are going to get an assignment today. We do have homework. Okay. This homework assignment for you guys will be due on Friday. You have a couple days to work on it, so it's not like due just immediately tomorrow. You've got a couple days, but it's due Friday when you walk in. Not at the end of class, not at the end of the day, not at the end of your study hall. Due right when you walk in period two on Friday. Okay, so and I'll give you that assignment. It's not too bad. I don't know how many problems it was. Maybe 15, something like that. I'll have to look at the official count. So it's not too bad. It's pretty short. All right, well, let's jump right in. Let's talk about it. Okay, first word we got to talk about for vocabulary. We got to talk about the word point. You guys didn't get this yesterday, so point. Okay, a geometrical point is a location in space. Location in space labeled with a capital letter. In space labeled with capital letters. So what I mean by that is a point is something like this. This is the way the book will show up. They'll just show a dot, and then they'll put a capital letter next to it on the page. That's a point. Now, it doesn't matter the thickness. So if there's another point on the board somewhere, and the dot was slightly different, it doesn't matter. It's not like a geographical map where cities that are bigger have bigger dots. It's not the case in geometry. It's just these are the points, that's the drawing of it. So when you label it, they have to have the capital letters. So now, what I'm talking about is, so maybe the, maybe the homework question says, hey, find the point where these two lines intersect, where they cross. And that's what intersect means. We'll talk about that later. So we have, we have a drawing in your book. Something looks like this. And they're saying, hey, find the spot where they meet. Well, they cross right at point C, right? So that's the, the one spot where they both meet. So, your answer is called notation. It's how you answer your question, right? This is the part that I always say that people get wrong. When you name the spot where they cross, you have to actually write the word point in lowercase letters. So you write the word point, and then you write the capital letter after point C. If you forget to write the word point, like you just write C down, I count it wrong. That's how picky I am. You have to write the word point, put the letter after it. This is notation. That's the correct way. Because if you just wrote the letter down, that could represent something else. So you got to be careful of that. Point C. Questions about the first one. It's location space. We did that activity yesterday 
where you guys had to find the location on the marker board that was you know two feet from the fountain and it was between a tree and a flagpole. He was looking for a location, a point, one specific spot. You guys were moving the magnet around. Now, they used another word in this definition. They used the word space. Space is different. Space. Not the final frontier, but geometrical space is the set of all points. It's the set of all points. This room is space, three-dimensional. There's depth, height, width to it. There is, there is three dimensions in this room. It's the set of all points. So raise your hand, honest question. Raise your hand if you drew a picture of like the, the point up here, where you have these on your paper somewhere. Okay, so we have a couple that drew. Not ever, that's fine. You have a couple that drew on their paper. You now establish space in this room. Because I have some points on my marker board, these two, actually three. You guys have some space, um, points on your paper. You now established a depth to the room, a height to the room, because of where my planes are. We have different sized planes, different sized paper. Planes are tilted at different levels. Okay? So for space, it requires at least four non-coplanar points. And I'll talk about that word. That's a lot of vocabulary. To establish space, four non-coplanar points. Now there's a lot of words there. You can understand there has to be four points in the room. I have a couple up on the marker board. But non coplanar. What non coplanar means? Means not on the same plane. Not in the same plane. And I'll talk about that word plane here in a second. That's our next vocab word. Coplanar means all on the same plane. Non coplanar, not on the same plane. So I have three points on the board. You establishing the fourth dot somewhere on your paper, boom, now we have space. Three-dimensional. Um, that's the concept, to give you a little geeky knowledge, a little tech. That's exactly what tech industries do anymore to establish, um, they can use Wi-Fi networks in a house to establish the dimensions of your house. So like Apple's doing that, they're mapping the insides of the shopping malls and airports and stuff because they can look at the Wi-Fi network. They can look at, so that's one point in a building, one specific spot. They can look at all the people connected to it and now they're establishing space. And, when, and they'll track the movements of people and they'll just leave that, you know, the trail that they use on the grid itself, it won't move, it'll just be like a light bar. And once people move around enough, you establish where the walls are in a room. And so eventually they can map an entire house because they know you're not going to walk through a wall, you're going to walk through a doorway. And you're not going to go into certain places. So there might be a wall right there. And they'll start establishing that. It's kind of crazy the level of tech they can do anymore because of this idea of this basic geometry concept. Four points. And they can establish a space. All right. A little geeky knowledge for you. Now, let's go to the next word. Now, space doesn't have notation. You don't have notation for space because normally people don't talk about it. But points, you have to use the word point. Okay, the next one is called a line. Now, there's three types of lines. Yes, I said there's three types. Today, we're only dealing with one of them. So I don't overwhelm you. We're dealing with one type of line, self-entitled. It's just called a line. It is a geometrical figure that is the distance between two points. Two points. And extends in both directions without limit. What does it mean to be without limit? No end. No end. So if, if we're talking about two points, I have two points on the board. Here it is, A and B. Perfect. I can have all the this, the distance in between them, so I can connect them with the, with an actual line. That's what most people think. Sorry, it's supposed to be straight. I can't draw that. That's terrible. Actually, I can't even look at that anymore. My OCD's going off. 
even worse. All right. Anyway, uh, so you have the distance between two points, and you extend it in both directions, so it doesn't end, right? So we would extend this further, and to show that it doesn't end, I'll just go through the letter A. You have to put arrows. That's a line. Okay? It's between two points, and extend does not end. So how you name it, that's called notation. So maybe on the board, and it doesn't matter how many points are on the line, by the way, it says you know you need a minimum of two. You could have three on there, I don't care. Call this point D for all I care. You need you know two at least to make a line to establish it, which direction it's going. But notation. So maybe one of the questions on your homework was, hey, name a line that contains three points on it. Do you agree that that line has three points now? Okay, it has three. So just name the line. That's called notation, right? How, how do you answer the question? How do you name it? There's a couple different ways you can name lines. And this is the part on lines where people mess it up. They get it wrong. Because lines requires how many points? Two. Two. You better use two letters, not three. Even though it does have three points on it. When you name it, just pick any two of them that are on it. Because it requires two. Pick any two points on there. Pick two. B and D. Right. B and D. Boom. Perfect. Okay, B. Then draw a mock picture above it. Any two, any order. Doesn't have to be alphabetical. You can go D B for all I care. It's the same thing. So it's another name. So instead of calling it B D. A B. Say it again. A D. A D. Perfect. A D. The little arrows above it. Yes. If you forget the arrows, I count it wrong. That's how picky I am. Another name for it. A B. A B. Okay. Or A B N. Sorry. A B. Boom. They're all the same. It doesn't matter which ones you pick. As long as you pick two, you put a bar above it. Now, how you say this out loud, even though you're writing it down, you actually just say line AB. That's how you pronounce it. Even though it looks like this on paper, it's actually just pronounced out loud line AB because that's a line. That's a picture of a line. So it's pretty easy. Just pick any two. Now, there is another way to write it, and the book will show you this, and I just don't like it. I know that you can do this. If they put cursive letters at the end, sometimes your book does that. They put a little cursive letter at the very end of the arrow. It's not a point. There's no, not a dot down here for letter M. It's the actual name of the line. So how you name it if they use a cursive letter? You can call it all the ones you did. That's great. Or the book says you can do this. You can write the word line, and then you can put the cursive letter that's, that was in front of it or behind it. Maybe I don't know where the cursive letter is going to be. But you just pick it. And so that's line M. You actually have to write the word line and M. Don't put the little arrows above it. You can only put arrows above it if you're picking points that are on it. Two points. That's the only time you can put arrows. Okay, do we understand the two different ways? I'm betting on 90% of you will probably choose this. Because that's the way I started it and that's the way I prefer it. But maybe you don't have that luxury. Maybe this is the problem. Maybe you looked at a picture and the picture only had one. Whoa. It didn't have two. It only had one. It had a couple dots, but they weren't labeled. So now you have to choose this one. It's not a point. Don't say NB. Don't do that. It's just line M. You have to do it this way now. Because sometimes they do that in the book. They won't have a bunch of other points. They're supposed to have two. Okay, that's a line. There's two other types of lines. We're going to get those probably tomorrow or Thursday. Okay. Now, we've got to get to this idea of space. Because there was a word we have to talk about here. There's the word plane. Not an airplane, a geometrical plane. Okay. It is a limitless flat surface that contains at least three non-collinear points. Every time we get to a big word, it just, the definitions get more thick and more difficult looking. Plain. I'll let you write that one down. I can tell you right now, if you truly understood that definition for a plane, like you knew it, you probably know about 90% of your geometry. Because there's so many things in there, it's trying to explain so much, there's so many things in between that you know that if you can infer between the lines there, that if you really understood that definition, you know a lot about geometry.
Okay. What does the word limitless mean? No end. No end. Good. All right. What does the word at least mean? Minimum. Minimum. More than. So three or more. Okay? So minimum of three. Now, the one word that's probably getting people is not those. Those are all kind of easy leading up. It's this one. Kind of that idea of like non coplanar earlier. Non collinear. Not. Not in a straight line. So we need to pick three dots that are not in a straight line to make a plane. Now you're thinking, Ward, what does that mean? Because on the board here, now let me put these letters that I had back up here. These ones I had really. Put your points on the board, right? Do you agree that the marker board, the marker board is supposed to be a plane, a flat surface, right? So if you have really good imagination, the marker board continues through the floor, continues through the ceiling, continues that way and through the windows. Like it just keeps going, keeps molding. The mark board has all three dots on it, right? What they're trying to say is to make the plane unique, like the only plane that could do this, they have to be not in a straight line. Those three dots are in a straight line. So what that definition says, what you can infer from it, is that if they're in a straight line, there's another plane that can actually touch all three of these. If they're not in a straight line, there's only one plane. But if they're in a straight line, there's more than one. So here's my idea. Here's my way of trying to show you. This is a plane, flat surface. Imagine it extends all directions. I can tilt it. The minute I tilt it to a different space, that's a different plane. So if I put it over here, that's a different plane. Down here is a different plane because they're tilted all differently. Well, the marker board's a plane. It contains my three dots. But if I took my plane, my flat surface here, and I went this way, I could hit all three of them. Now you have two planes that are touching all three dots. Or I can tilt it this way, a little more upwards and it hits all three. Now that's a, set, that's a third plane now. And I could go this direction. So I go 360 degrees all the way around, keep going at different angles, going through all three. That's an infinite number of planes. So to make it unique, to make one plane only, you have to have the three dots not in a straight line. So let me draw. Three dots not in a straight line. Uh, let's go, what do we got? E, F, and G. So those are my three dots. There is only one plane that will hit all three of them. One. Because if I were to try to tilt a different plane, I would miss one of the dots. Like, for instance, here's my plane. I tilt it right here and I go through G, F. I can't hit letter E, so that this plane won't work. Go here, I miss F, I miss G, because I tried at different levels. The only plane that can touch all three of them at the same time would be this marker board. There's no other planes that can do it that are flat, not curved. So that's the idea. They had to be not in a straight line. Now, how you name a plane? You have to use at least three points. Now, this is the weird one. Like with lines, you had to pick two. Like just two. Even though there might be more, you have to pick two. On a plane, at least three or more. So on this marker board, I have E, F, and G. So when I name it, so the notation here. So if it said, hey, name a plane that touches these three points. Fine. Here's how you write. You write the word plane, and then you put the three letters you want to hit. A, or sorry, E, F, and G. And it could be in any order. It doesn't have to be alphabetical. You go G, E, F, for all I care. But three points at least. So if there's another point, now, other than those three, is there any other points on my marker board? Yeah, I have A, B, and, Z, a, B, and D. I can list those two. Because at least three dots. So plane is the unique one. You can put it as many letters as you want. A, B, and D. I could put all six of them that I have on the marker board. I don't know, do I have another one up here somewhere? Nope, just those six. I could put all of them for all I care. As long as that they're not all in a straight line. At least three of them are. That's what I care. I know these three are, but that's fine. But the other ones weren't, so we're good. We covered our bases. And you can put them in any order you like. You, you can only use three. You could pick four. You could pick five. You don't have to pick all of them. 
Any questions? Okay, that's, this is a plane, flat surfaces. Well, over here it said you had to pick, to make space in this room, you had to pick four that are not in the same plane. All the points, all six of these dots I have up on the marker board are all in the same plane. They're all in my marker board here. They're on the same flat surface. Having one of you in this room that had a dot on their paper, because I do see some dots on papers, right? That now established space in the room. Because I have a couple up here, and yours is the fourth dot that is not on the same plane. So we're establishing the, the actual width, or the depth to the room. So, because all your papers are at different levels, that even helped out even more. Okay, questions with any of the vocab? Okay, those are the basic words. Now there's other words that are, that are also implied here. We have the word like um, intersect. You know, I, I used that word earlier, when things cross. Because um, there's different types of interactions of objects. There's, um, in fact, let me just list these off. There's a bunch of different ways uh, items can interact. The interactions of geometric figures. There we go. The interactions. There's a couple different ways things can interact or not interact. Number one, this one I used earlier. Things could intersect. What I mean by that, things could literally cross each other. Like, for instance, two lines could cross right here at this point. I think I haven't used the letter C. I think I took it off the board over here. That's an intersection. They intersect. They cross. Now, here's something that will really blow your mind. Okay? This is something that... It really throws your mind for a loop, okay? When you name a point, right? You, you write the word point and you put the letter after it, right? one dot, okay? To make a point, to make one point, this dot on the board, you had to have two lines across to make it. You have to, you can see it right here in front of you. To make that dot on the marker board, it requires two lines crossing. That's what makes a point. Now, here's the trippy part. It needs two lines that cross. What does a line need? It needs two points. Do you see the weird mystery here now? To make one dot, you need two lines crossing somewhere. Imaginary drawing, you need two lines across. But to make the line in the first place, you needed two. So now you can start to see your brain starting to warp a little bit that to make the line, to make you know multiple lines, you're gonna need things crossing. There's gonna be intersections everywhere. Because just to make these lines in the first place, I needed other dots that required other lines crossing them. And oh my god, it spirals out of control. And it keeps going. Because for every line, there's two dots on it. And to make a dot, there needs two lines across. And it just keeps building, building, building. That's why things are solid. Yeah, it's the weirdest thing in the world. Your mind is now kind of worked a little bit. All right, second way, interactions. Number two, items can be parallel. Somebody give me an, an example of parallel objects. Something in real life that's parallel, please. Uh, train tracks? Train tracks, perfect example. Railroad tracks. Oh, or is that your one that you're going to pick? Uh, yeah, I know. That's the one I ever go see. It's good. It's a good example. Please. Right. What? A road. The road. Lines on the road. The road itself, the walls on the road. Because roads are a certain width, and there's like, what is it, 10 feet, something like that, per your side of the road. So 20 feet all the way across, or something like that, I suppose. Yeah, the road itself. Okay. The lines on the floor are supposed to be parallel. We'll talk about that idea of parallel at a later time, but parallel. It's a lack of interaction. They don't cross. They're never going to meet down the road. Okay. Number three. They could be, they could coincide. To coincide is to be right on top of each other. So, here's my example. This is one I always give people and it's really weird. Here's a line. Yeah, I can label it with my dots, right? Let's call those, you know, M and N, for all I care. Okay, there's my line, MN. And I draw another line right on top of it. And you can hardly even tell. So that's P and Q. 
You can't even tell. Like the lines are right on top of each other, that's coinciding. They share not just two points, they share everything on the lines. They're exactly the same. It's like when you trace something. You're coinciding. You're going on top of it. Coinciding is the ultimate interaction. Everything is crossing. Everything is meeting. And the other type of interaction is to be skew. It's a, it's a type of lack of interaction. Skew. This is the one that's really hard for people to wrap their head around unless they see it for the first time. Skew is when you're not parallel. So get this out of your mind. You're not parallel. But they don't cross either. Oh, yeah. You're just like, what? Yeah, that just happened. It's not parallel. But it doesn't touch either. Think about that just for a couple seconds. I want, I want someone in here to figure that out. How can you have things that are not parallel, but they don't cross, they don't intersect? Okay. Max, do you have your hand up there? Think you got it? No, no, it's got to be straight. It's got to be straight objects. I like the idea of curving. I like where your head's at. Please. They're on two different planes. Ha! Nailed it. They're on two different surfaces. Here's my best example of it. In fact, I'm going to use two different colors. Okay? A line. Imagine that this extends. Keeps going. Okay? This line's up here. You see where they're at? They're not going to touch. One's going this way. One's going this way. Do you see that there's like this weird gap between them? They're on two different planes. But they're not parallel. It's not like the railroad track where they're going side by side. They're on two different planes. They're going different directions. So there is a weird definition of parallel. They have to go the same direction, and they have to be on the same plane. But for skew, they're going different directions on different planes. That was really clever, really, really good. Most people cannot conceptualize that when they first hear it. They're like, is that even possible? Yes, it is. Pretty good. Those are your four types of interactions or lack of interactions. That things either cross, they're parallel, or they're on a different planes in the first place. I mean, that's it. That's what you can expect. This, these four concepts make all of geometry, make every shape you can think of. Just having those different types of ways of things interacting with each other. That makes your shapes in this world. All right. Homework today. I'm going to put it on the board here. They're going to ask you to look at pictures where where you try to find where these objects cross. Maybe it's just one point where like two lines meet. Maybe it's where two planes meet. Okay, so here's an example of two planes meeting. Um, imagine this wall right here, this whole wall. Okay, and it's gonna meet that other wall over there. Well, where they meet, do you see the line going down the wall over there? When two planes meet, they make a line. When two planes meet, two flat surfaces meet, they make a line. The best example other than using walls, hold out your hand in front of you. Imagine there is a piece of bread on it. Piece of bread. Okay? And pick up your other hand. This is your butter knife. You're going to put butter on it. But instead of putting butter on your bread, you're going to cut the bread. Well, it's two planes, right? You have your bread, you have your knife. Those are planes. They're flat surfaces. When you cut your bread, what happens to the bread? Yeah, it splits. There's literally a line on the bread, a, a straight line going across the bread. Because you're cutting, you're, you're taking two planes and they're interacting. They're making a line. It's cutting the bread. It's making a perfect strip down. That's what happens when you have two planes cross. It makes a perfect line. And you're seeing it. You're seeing it right in the middle of the wall. If you had multiple planes crossing, different planes, they'd make a point. Three planes crossing. They make a point. Here's the example. The corner up in the wall. Where you have three planes. You have a wall, a wall, and a ceiling. They make a point right in the corner of the room. So now you're going, oh my god. To make, to make a point, you can now use planes, not just lines. And now the whole geometry spectrum now just changed for you. It's the craziest thing when you start seeing how all these things interact. Okay, here's your homework today. It's due on Friday. It's pretty easy. It's basically just... Select a few problems where they're going to ask you to name an object, try to draw an object. And I want to see how well you're kind of paying attention. Now, I do require in this class, and I know this seems crazy, it's math, I do expect you to try to read your textbook. Open it up, skim through it, try to read some of the stuff in there, because sometimes I do skip over words because I require you to read a book. 
And there is a lot of vocab terms in here, because if you remember the other day when we went through your textbook, let me try to open up that first page. First page. When you go through your textbook, there is vocab terms in here. There is yellow words that are bold and highlighted. Even though I may not have covered it that day, eventually we might cover it, it is still a fair game for a test. So, because I do require you that you actually open this thing and actually look at it. You can use the online version eventually. There's lots of words. I've covered pretty much everything today, though. I think I've got every word uh, for the most part. All right, but here's your homework. Let me write it on the board. This is due on Friday. It needs to be done on a piece of paper. Um, what I require, so on your paper, when you're doing your homework, and yes, you're going to tear the paper out and hand it in, you need to have your name on it. You need to have what uh, what the date is. So the date today is the uh, 28th. Sorry, I don't have that updated up there. I'll get it down. It's the 28th today. You need to have the page numbers and stuff on that, somewhere on the top. Page numbers and the, the numbers you're going to be doing. And you also know, need to write your period that you are. The reason why you need to write the period is because you can turn your homework at any time during the day. Maybe you're in a study hall, like, oh, I just got words homework done. Walk in here, I got a basket in the back of the room, go turn it in, walk out. That's why I put the basket back there. You don't have to wait until due date, because maybe you'll lose it. Maybe that person always misplaces things. Turn it in, walk it in here, put it in the front, I don't care. But these need to be on somewhere on the paper. It doesn't have to be exactly in the corner. It could be anywhere, but they have to, all four they need to be on there. If you forget your name on your paper, guess what happens to it? I recycle it. It goes in the back and then recycle. And I don't grade it until your name's on. So I'm not going to try to infer whose homework it is. I'm not going to interpret that. Because if I have one person doing that, I have 180 kids doing that. I'm not going to do that. Okay, but here's your homework. It is page 8. Numbers. 1 through 3. 8 through 10, 13 through 21, number 32, number 34. That's your homework. It's due on Friday. Completed, done, finished, however you want to say it. You have plenty of days to work on it. Don't give me that excuse, I didn't have time. You have like four days to get it done. Just think about the time it takes me to grade all 180 of them. Then you can complain. All right, questions, comments about what we're doing. Okay, you have about five minutes left last year. You can kind of do what you need to. Uh, online versions won't work. They won't work just because um, we had to take the code back so you get everyone's working correctly so that they're all uniform. So I'll try to get that hand up to you later. I'm supposed to be receiving an email. I'll probably send you an email later today saying that you can now access it. But it's supposed to be ready. Okay, all right. Do you want to go get your textbook to do that? Um. Could you oh, yes. Yes, 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 I remember, book covers due tomorrow. Don't forget, book covers due tomorrow.